Yeah, okay, so uh, next we have uh, Ira Alanko. Uh, Ira is uh, the program manager of the Finnish Artificial Intelligence Program, Aurora or AI, uh, which makes use of um, uh, artificial intelligence to create models that can drive forward a systemic change towards a human-centric society. Uh, she has a track record of promoting innovation and experimentation, plus uh, uh, development of e-services in Finland from a ministeri ministerial level. So I'm very curious on what Ira is uh, uh, going to uh, tell us today. Uh, take it away, Ira. You're muted. Yes. So I'm just going to show you my video because I'm afraid that my connection will not last if I keep it on. So I'm sure you can live with when you've seen me once, then you can live with the image in your mind. <laughs> so if we go into the question. Um, so as a thank you for the for the introduction and basically it's been it's a, it's a pleasure to be here today to talk to you about this. Well I'm not going to go into specifically it, into uh, artificial intelligence or, or sort of like talking about what that is but really sort of like give you a setting of the work that we're doing in Finland and then um, the sort of like angles and questions that we have coming up in our work that would might be of students working about uh, around social um, psychology and sort of working working on sort of a, a thesis uh, projects and these kinds of things around uh, around this work but basically if you look at what uh, how Finland is on the sort of like a global arena uh, just just within the EU if you look at the digital competitiveness uh, index uh, the the EU does this uh, every year uh, two years in a row we've been number one so it looks at uh, sort of like the the amount of like capable be people in the country, looks at uh, like the internet connections, uh, the infrastructure in the society, uh, how much like there's digital services, for example, um, and just generally uh, how the public sector works in the digital setting. So if you look at the Corona situation or COVID-19 situation, uh, Finland was one of those countries that coped quite well. Uh, the public sector wasn't on, down on its knees, maybe for like a day or two, but then it, the, the capacity was quickly fixed and everything kept working as normal so so like it didn't really affect our sort of working day as much as other than like content wise but like the actual sort of uh, digital aspect of it worked really well and then if you look at like um, what the work we're doing in Finland <clears throat> like uh, compared like from an OEC OECD perspective, uh, they did recently, a couple of years ago, researched all the different AI strategies that different countries have made. And only two countries specifically had um, like a, a focus on public sector transformation. So a lot of countries have uh, artificial intelligence strategies uh, with different uh, sort of uh, angles and perspectives and what, what they want to tackle. Some are very specific in what they want to tackle, but Finland and Italy were the only ones that had a very, very clear sort of larger systemic change uh, perspective and, and sort of target. Uh, in, even in Finland, it's in quite a human-centric society. So if we, uh, if we talk about like in Finland, at least when we've I've been working around develop, development of digital services for for a very long time um, and it always wor works around efficient administration and the shift from being efficient and having digital services that work well and that you can do it digitally to shifting towards you know this sort of like my data um, idea that you control the information about you and the information that you want to have in your hands regarding your well-being or or what would be the best decision what service would be the best service to use in this in your situation that kind of information isn't easily available to you you have to google it you have to know what you have to google and all these kinds of things so this shift from um, this sort of like efficient administration to this people orientated proactive society is quite large it goes uh, it, it was quite a sort of nice um, 
um, listening to the presentation before me, talking about the sort of research side of it, and then actually going into the implementation phase. We're in the implementation phase. How do we create the systemic change in the public sector? How do we support uh, entrepreneurs, businesses in our country so that they start providing services that are, are better for people? Um, how, how do we, you know, look at the, the way um, the, uh, the sort of third sector is funded so that there are, the, you know, options to uh, uh, private and, and public services for to promote health well-being so it's a, it's a very large systemic change that we're aiming for but we're sort of approaching it from a very specific angle and with a very sort of specific tool that we're going to use so which we, which is like the aurora aurora ai network so if we're aiming for human-centric and proactive society we need to create the infrastructure that allows us to have um, the tools and the infrastructure to sort of allow us to provide information about the services that are best for you in that specific life event. So, for example, um, the sort of um, theoretical base that we're using in is sort of how to assess the well-being of a person or, or help person uh, uh, assess their own well-being is looking at the Stiglitz model. And it's sort of, um, if we look at like compared to other ministries that use all different kinds of models on assessing well-being, this is a more comprehensive because it takes into account many other factors that other models don't take into consideration. So there's health, education, personal activities, political voice and governance, social connections and relationships, material living standards, environment, security and insecurity. So there's a lot of elements uh, involved in sort of assessing is the person really well? Um, is there something that can be provided to sort of uh, help the person find better solutions for themselves? So the program in itself, um, it's a very large vision and a very large goal that we're aiming for, but we only have a very short time to do this. And the way that we've sort of worded this is that we're creating the foundation and the basis for, for this big, large systemic change that's ahead of us. Uh, the, the need for the systemic change is quite clear. Um, the municipal, we like work with many stakeholders on the municipal level. Just the meeting before that I came from to this meeting um, with some certain cities as ex like prime examples of going through this large or, or like organizational change to be able to tackle this change towards a more human centric approach. Um, you know, the Aurora AI network is a specific tool. It's a network, it's a collection of different types of technical components um, and different sort of user, and we're testing different user interfaces to be able to actually provide the information to the person. So, so that, you know, whenever you have a different life event, then, then you have tools that you're at your disposal on, on how to assess maybe what you should do. Are you doing quite well? Like, are, are you like sleeping enough and all this kind of stuff? Because if you look at it on a broader spectrum, uh, rather than just public services, a lot of information is out there. You have, you know, like uh, Apple Watches or other tools you can use to sort of uh, assess what your, or, or the Finnish invention, Oraring, um, to sort of assess what your physical well-being is. And, you know, there's all lots of tools that people are using, but none of the information is being brought together to help you really like have a, have a grip on your own, own sort of like well-being. Um, so that's the Aurora AI network. We're looking at how to technically uh, create, create a network that allows for us to sometime in the future have a very futuristic and, and sort of human-centric way of uh, pro like providing information about services. Then we also have recognized that it's not enough to sort of do the tech stuff. Um, we're also looking at creating a collection of courses to develop the abilities and comp competences of the public sector and also other stakeholders in our society so that we're ready to, for example, tackle the ethical issues that might come up, we might have to face in the future or, or just generally have an understanding of artificial intelligence, all the different levels of it, what it requires, all that kind of stuff. And just other that kind of, other kind of uh, sort of um, themes that we know that we need to tackle in order to sort of promote the, and support the systemic change ahead.
And then, um, as we have a lot of things going on, very concrete things going on during the program, we're creating a toolkit for transformation. So something that stays and lives after the program has ended and something that any organization can use, you know, tools, toolkits from like basic canvases to all, all sorts of sort of like lessons learned, uh, checklists and all these kinds of stuff to really help uh, organizations tackle the systemic change ahead of them from their own perspective and the in, in the in the sort of order that they want to do it, so a lot of lot of uh, very sort of big things that we need to tackle, um, and we understand that the change has to happen on many different levels. So there's the technology level, then there has to be the functional level change, and then that sort of feeds into what kind of societal change has to happen, and then that feeds into sort of really making the for example the changing of the process is more efficient so that then the technology can be used in a more efficient way so yeah so one one thing that um i, I thought like some interesting questions that we've come across that might might be for interesting to you guys as well just to get you thinking and really light some bulbs is um sort of like if we're thinking about there's all different types of life events how could um if, if you think that artificial intelligence can help uh, tackle large data mass masses uh, and get, get information to you quicker, uh, also can I sort of assess, like, for example, if anyone's used any any sort of, like, bought anything online, there's always, if you're looking at some product, it says, well, you know, anyone who's bought this product, uh, often they buy these things. And these kinds of things they can sort of... Uh, uh, recommend to the person without even having having any knowledge of who the user is. So around life events, a lot of stuff can already be done on an anonymous basis. So then we get into this sort of stuff, um, like if we have a dashboard, a well-being dashboard, which is like the first one of the first user interfaces we're we're doing for 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 our test groups during the program. What how should the information be presented? Like for example, even if it's the same information, the effects of colors, uh, the, how visual it is, what kind of do you use emo emojis or what kind of stuff? Uh, what how should it be presented to really make sure that the the information goes home? And then, uh, for example, if we use chatbots, which is also one use, user interface that we're working with, because it's just something that all, all the municipalities are already doing and, and more every organization seems to want to do chatbots. So that's what we're doing also. Um, but so how can the answers that the chatbot provides be worded in a way so that it really sort of promotes the reaction that you want, want people to have? I mean, there's so many sort of... Uh, trials that could be built around these kinds of things uh, and a lot of research could be done around these questions. So this was just a sort of a very, very brief, very quick uh, introduction to what we're doing and I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of questions. I had very limit, limited time so I thought I'd keep this very, very short and simple. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ira. We don't have any questions yet. Uh, I'm just uh, quite curious on um, like, are there chatbots that actually work nowadays somewhere? <laughs> I, I, yes, I'm feeling there's many. Yeah, it was it was just uh, funny. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, um, I had an experience where I learned that uh, my bank has 20, 24 seven uh, customer support, which is actually open five hours a day and otherwise, uh, <laughs> we, uh, and not on weekends, but and, uh, with the chatbot. <laughs> <laughs> well, that means that there's a person behind it. it, means it's not using AI. So, but also like something that we're looking at in, with chatbots is uh, really like making sure that the dialogue moves from one chatbot to another. So there's a demo done uh, during the last uh, government term where three different uh, uh, organization, public sector organizations had their own chatbots and they tested how the dialogue could change from one another. So you stay in the same chatbox window, but then say the color changes. So, you know, you're dealing with a different uh, government agency. So, you know, mm -hmm. there, there are things that 
that you can do, but there's like the idea is that whether it be chatbots or whatever is the user inf interface that you want to use, it would be easier to sort of the dialogue moves with you. You have your sort of avatar with you and you can give the avatar rights to sort of handle information about you. So it makes that why, why do you always have to be active in solving your problems? Why can't you just put it out there? Like I have this problem, please fix it. And then, then the system informs, hey, this thing is fixed now, for example, already with the tax tax um, uh, tax side in Finland, it's already automated. So you just get a paper paper home, even it'll, that, that will be fully digitalized soon. But, you know, you can still get it on paper at home and then you can just check is everything all right. And then you just inform them if there is a, if there is some, a mistake in there. So like really like making things easier for the person so you can concentrate in, on doing other stuff than just like dealing with the pub public sector. And really being aware of the choices that you have available for you. For if you if you're like a foreign student that comes to Finland, you really have, have like where do you start with sort of looking at where to find find housing or or you know stuff that you can do outside the university and all this kind of stuff. So where do you get the information? So with the the idea of the Aurora Aurora AI network is that then there will be a simple. Uh, user interface, whichever you want to use, and then through that you have access to all the information about the services uh, in your area. I mean, that's the long-term plan. Obviously, we probably won't get there in, by the end of 22, but you know we're going in small steps, going towards that. Okay. Hey, uh, we have um, uh, now scheduled a break until half past, so we have eight minutes. But uh, I'm happy if you guys, uh, if you want to answer some of the questions that are uh, now in the Q and A box, I totally need to get uh, coffee and toilet, so I'll be back in a few minutes. <laughs> yes, and uh, and I can I can uh, please do go, Matti, and everyone, if you want to go go on the break. But if you Ira still want to answer Kwok's uh, question. Uh, she, uh, he says, thank you, Ira, for the presentation. Fascinating project. I suppose the part that was not clear for me was the stakeholder agreement, i.e. public data driving the dashboard metrics. So can you uh, clarify uh, or talk a little bit? Yeah, more? I'm not sure if I understand the question. Kwok, what do you mean by the stakeholder agreements? Sarmita, can uh, you, it was just. Can you un, it, unmute Quok? The right. question that I. Yeah, yeah the, I, the question that I. Oh, good. Hi there. Yeah, apologies. I was rushing to write the question, and Matthew says, Oh, there's no question. And then I was like, Oh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. But, um, no, I, I, I suppose. So the data that you get, um, you know, in terms of withholding information and things like that at the at the data level because you know we're informing the changes and when you're talking about um like the well-being indicators for example um who provides them and then um you know if, i'm getting the impression but again it's not clear for me that you've got to have a a, a whole system kind of approach to that where you get buy-in from different areas to generate this uh, intelligence, but am I wrong? Yeah. With that? No. no, no, not at all. So I didn't go into that because it's still sort of like working on exactly what, where the information will come from. The idea is that we're now like working on the user interface and that the information that will be uh, sort of presented there is information that we're collecting now as we're doing the preparatory work to set up the, the user interface. And we have a very specific uh, sort of uh, stakeholder group that we're working with and, and sort of the, we have a lot of, so in Finland is like the promised land of registries and, and all this kind of stuff. So we have a lot of research and registry data that we can use uh, as a basis and this sort of like um, what I refer to with all the welfare data that's available if people use sort of tech devices uh, in their own time um, that isn't linked yet but we're having those discussions all the time as well so obviously the more um, sort of information we have available then the the better the dashboard will be but just from a from a general perspective I mean often you, you can sort of even with a uh, anonymous data you can have a get a quite quite a clear um, uh, sense of what kind of person is as, as asking the question even if it's on an anonymous data I'm not sure if that uh, quite so there isn't really like 
we're, we're looking into all the, all the different options um, and we're starting with sort of like registry and research data and data collected about with uh, with the specific stakeholder group we have working around this sort of dashboard idea uh, and then it'll sort of expand from there as, as we get the dashboard working and you know working from there yeah no it's fantastic it's fascinating it's, it's a really nice project to see so it's I really appreciate you sharing that the, what what the project's like I think you know it's it sounds like a, a nice thing to start with this type of data um, that's already available if I mean as you mentioned Finland has a lot of that already available and then um, and we see the difference across the EU with regards to the DESI and how it's spread in terms of um, data availability on different sectors so um, yeah, I, I think this is this is makes a lot of sense. I suppose it also encourages for other research to put data in data repositories that would be linked with that. And so then that I assume that you're already looking at some of the data repositories that universities already have to to gather that data and that that knowledge. Yeah, and like if if you if anyone is interested in sort of like uh, research, like putting some research efforts into into the stuff that we're working on, if you're if you've ever heard of a FCAI, it's the Finnish uh, Artificial Intelligence, and actually the University of Helsinki has a has a strong foothold in that organization. We work with them closely to promote uh, like uh, uh, a lot of research around this area, so not just uh, data and AI and all this kind of stuff but also bringing in other perspectives because we need the other perspectives of research to sort of like really bring bring meat around the bones and that's that's why I thought it was was an interesting subject to bring to you guys as well because you look at things not from a day purely technical perspective you have other other things that you can also give into the discussion yeah thank you and with chatbots uh, working effect effectively, like we really are working on metrics on how to sort of also the different components that we use and the services that then are uh, sort of like made available to really also collect information on the effectiveness and the impact of the services. So do they really have an impact on the well-being of the person? Uh, and then maybe sort of look at how, how the impact of the services can be rated. So these are all in the future but things that we sort of are ambitiously striving for <laughs> yeah this is a fascinating and and indeed ambitious project and but really will be really useful uh in the future so so yes i think we have now almost 80 80 participants listening and uh do get in touch with ira and and we can dis continue the discussions on the slack channel and as well, uh, also on the Facebook group, um, also on this presentation. So, excellent, uh, exciting stuff. And thank now we you. Have to thank you, Ira, very much. <laughs>